Well, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Mari Quinn. Um, I'm here uh, from UTS and I also have my colleague uh, Keiko Yasukawa and we're here to introduce and um, welcome you but also to tell you about the program that we run uh, in the TESOL and Applied Linguistics program. Um, before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge that I'm on Gadigal land um, and I'd like to acknowledge the uh, owners of this land, past, present, emerging, uh, land never ceded. And wherever you are, um, I'll leave it to you to acknowledge, acknowledge where you are as well. I'm not on the land of UTS, a few of us are, but uh, I am here in beautiful Dulwich Hill. So just before we start, I just want to explain that this is being recorded. Uh, the, the session will be recorded just so we can have a record of it and we can make it available to other people. Um, we'll be recording any audio, screen share and um, presenters' comments. Um, there won't be anything, any audio from you. Um, however, if you want to, if you don't want to have your name acknowledged or anything, um, certainly um, text it not to write anything in chat. Um, and if you do want to, if you have any um, issues with that, uh, please feel free to get in uh, contact with us later and ask your questions if you don't want to do that with us here today. So with that said, I'm going to just move on to talk about who's here today and what we'll be doing. So mainly um, Keiko and I will be giving uh, a lot of input, some input, but I'd also just like to um, welcome to today Elizabeth Campbell, who many of you will know, of course, as the EALD Education Coordinator in the Multicultural Education section of the Department of Education. We welcome Elizabeth and thank you for her support. And uh, we may, you may have questions you might like to ask Elizabeth later on. Um, but I'd also like to acknowledge um, Narelle Penrose, who's made herself available today, a teacher um, at, from the high school sector who has uh, completed our course here at UTS and we'll be able to talk about that. We are hoping that Sion would come in as well, but um, hasn't quite made it yet. So that would be somebody from the primary sector. But um, both of these teachers are here because they've done the program, or we'll be we're talking because they've done the program. And I'm going to start with them, in fact. So I'm going to start with Narelle, <laughs> all by yourself, Narelle, I'm afraid, um, just to ask, answer this question really for teachers, because you're all teachers here in this audience. So um, I'm just, I've asked Narelle just to say a few words first, and she'll be back at the end to answer more specific questions. Why study TESOL and applied linguistics? What's it offering you in your role as a teacher? Sure. Um, thanks, Murray. I, well, I've been an English teacher for about um, 12 years ago, and then I um, took on the role of, I became interested in EALD. So I took on that role and I had been doing that for um, some years, but um, I didn't have a per permanent job and I was keen to get some credentials to help me to do that, but also particularly to, to further my study and um, knowledge of EALD. So I had actually done my teaching, Bachelor of Teaching at um, UTS. So I decided to, um, to look, in fact, in fact, that's what I was originally going to do, but I had younger children then and all the lectures were at um, five to seven. So, you know, that's sort of bit funny how I came back. Anyhow, I, I decided to go back to UTS because I'd really enjoyed my Bachelor of Teaching degree. And I signed up and um, I really enjoyed the, the course. Um, it was very, you know, very instructive, very well run. All the lecturers are terrific. And um, so I was able to take my knowledge to back to the classroom and it also gained me a, full, a permanent job with the uh, department because um, they accepted the credential. And I know that there is, you know, the bit of doubt about what, which ones are accepted. And I can tell you UTS is definitely accepted by the department. So that's my little story. <laughs> Thanks so much, Narelle. And I'd like to say, Narelle studied when I wasn't there, but I'm hoping that I've kept up, I'm keeping up the uh, standard of lecturers at, uh, at UTS. So thank you for that. We'll come back to Narelle. You may have some questions specifically from, for, from a teacher's point of view. So we would encourage you to um, put up some of your questions there. So I'm going to ask Keiko, who is the coordinator of the program, just to talk a little bit about the, the um, course, courses generally and then we'll come back um, to talk more specifically about the, teach, the, the courses you might be doing as teachers. Okay, thanks, Marie, and welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Narelle. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, so the TESOL and Applied Linguistics Program at UTS um, serves a range of different um, teachers' needs. Um, so we do have a stream focusing on 
um, those teachers who want to teach in the adult education sector. Um, but today, I think we're focusing on those teachers who want to focus in the EALD and literacy in the school sector, primary and secondary. And then just, you know, to give you the full picture, um, we also have a stream um, that focuses on academic English. So this is teaching um, English for academic purposes um, to international students generally. Um, or in for, um, English as a foreign language context in, um, in different countries. And so we have these three specialist streams, um, but we also have a number of subjects where students from all of the different strands are studying together because, you know, language learning, literacy learning, and I will also add numeracy learning, is a lifelong and life-wide endeavor. And I think, um, you know, even if you are um, a primary school teacher, it's informative to know, you know, where your students are going to go into in secondary school, tertiary education, and so forth. So um, in the ELD, a EALD and literacy stream, we have um, teachers who are teaching EALD students in New South Wales primary and secondary schools teachers teaching in intensive English centers, um, teaching English in primary and secondary schools overseas, and also one of our graduates is currently leading the refugee support programs in New South Wales schools. Um, I probably won't um, elaborate on the other two streams um, at this moment. If there are any questions about it, um, perhaps we can leave those questions to the end so you can talk um, more specifically about <clears throat> the strand that um, the people who have joined the meeting today are interested in. And, but I might also just add that um, some of our students, after they finish their um, master's degree, um, go on to do um, a research degree, a research master's or PhD. Thanks, Mari. Thanks, Keiko. Sorry, I just had a problem with my mute button there. Um, so if you're going to be studying TESOL applied linguistics, we, from your point of view as a teacher, we want to be able to provide you with some background. So we, we want to provide basic and various amounts of extended background for you to make decisions on how to support students in, or children in school, how to support teachers and schools. Uh, in making decisions around language provision. And it gives you a qualification that can be used in other language contexts, as some of the ones that uh, Keiko was talking about. And of course, we would always encourage you to consider further research in higher degrees, masters and PhDs. So uh, we would really like to leave those options open. And in fact, uh, some of our subjects, for example, the subject I teach, research literacies, is helping to set you up for that sort of um, ongoing study. So we would hope you would keep that in your sights as well. So I just want to talk now about the, the sorts of things that our, our, uh, we're thinking about when we, we're looking at courses for teachers. So when we, what we do is we really want to think about what teachers already know and then what do teachers need to build through doing our courses. So if we think about you and your background for just a moment, you already have knowledge of teaching, uh, the teaching context and pedagogy. We, we, we acknowledge that you already know that. Um, you also have knowledge of the curriculum and its content. Um, some of you may have very deep knowledge of that sort of area because you've been teaching in schools for quite a while. And maybe some of you have some language knowledge. Again, deep knowledge or some knowledge, or maybe some of you don't have um, much language, specific language knowledge because of the, the context you are, uh, you're, you're working in. All of this is something you are bringing to our, our courses. And what the department and uh, we want to build with you what you need for this sort of work in working with the ALD is really deep knowledge about language and linguistics so deeper than just knowing where the full stop goes or you know knowing the apostrophe is wrong in the shop that sort of thing um, so we want to build some really deep knowledge about language uh, we also want to build on your knowledge of pedagogy to build pedagogy of language learning uh, as Keiko said we've got we're working across quite a few contexts uh, but we do have subjects which really look at the pedagogy of language learning for schools, as well as the more general understanding. So we have some really general principles around language learning that we then adapt to different situations. 
Um, and we want to really build specialised knowledge of language learners. So as, as you saw, there were lots of contexts where language is taught. So that means that there are lots of situations for learners, lots of different types of learners. Um, so we want to really understand what those, uh, those, those learners bring and what, what that means for language teaching. So when we're thinking about courses for you, we're thinking about what RPL you can bring to that, but keeping in mind that we do want to make sure that we build skills and we build uh, the sorts of knowledges and skills you need to, to, to work in schools so that you can really do a great job, of course. So we want to be able, when we think about RPL and credit, um, oh, so RPL is recognition of prior learning. So when we're thinking about credit, we also want to make sure that we give you the opportunity to build those, uh, the, the sorts of things you need for your job. So um, with some advice from Elizabeth, what I've been doing is thinking about what sort of teachers might come. So I'm going to suggest some situations you might be in and try and show you what you could be doing. Um, so let's start with the first one. And this might be you. You can you don't have to have hands up. We can't see you. But um, oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry. What I wanted to explain was about the nested graduate um, graduation op uh, opportunities, graduate options opportunities. So uh, we have we call it nested because we have our basic uh, qualification, which is the graduate certificate in TESOL Applied Linguistics, and that's the minimum requirement for EALD as an ELD qualification. But that's nested inside a larger qualification, the graduate diploma, and that's inside a, a larger uh, qualification, the Master of TESOL and Applied Linguistics. So depending on what you want and what background you're coming from will help you to think about what might be best for you. I'm going to show you the programs um, and at the end I will go through the fees. So just keep in mind how many subjects we're talking about and that'll help you to calculate at the end. So let's imagine that you are, and you might be this person, you have no EALD qualification. And I know that some of you have come along to find out about this. So we have uh, teachers who might be a qualified primary school teacher. So no EALD qualification, but you're a primary school teacher or you have no EALD qualification, but you're a secondary English teacher or a LOAT major, you have this, you're teaching in language already. So if that's the case, you would be doing three subjects for your minimum qualification, because we will give you RPL for introducing knowledge about language, because we understand that primary school teachers do a lot of that in their initial qualification, and English and LOAT teachers have also done a lot about language in their qualification. So this would mean that you would have three subjects, so three subjects, um, and you would uh, come out at the end with the minimum qualification, which is the graduate certificate. However, you might be a teacher with no EALD qualification, and you're a secondary teacher with no English or no low. So you might be a PE teacher, or you might be, um, it's not called that anymore, of course, a science teacher. Or so if you're coming without a strong language background, then you would do the four subjects that everybody else is doing um, inside the graduate certificate. So the graduate certificate gives us this basis. And as you notice there, we have knowledge about language and we also have pedagogy. Now, the Department of Education will ask you to do not just a PRAC subject, but one that's particularly in our new stream of um, our PRAC subject for schools. So we already have a PRAC subject for those who've never been a teacher. Remember, we've got people coming from all sorts of walks of life, never taught, never been in a classroom since they were there themselves. So in that case, teachers don't need to do that, but we do need an EALD based practicum. So that's why that third, that third subject is in the um, the in, in both of these subjects, uh, both of these, these pathways, um, but teachers who are already English teachers or primary school teachers, you will still need to do this PRAC. So four subjects if you've got no language background, RPL and then four, three subjects if you are a primary school teacher or an English teacher. And this will give you, also there's the PRAC subjects, this will give you the minimum qualification. So Great way to start out, um, great way to introduce you to the world of EALD. And if you do uh, sign up for a subject, a course, there is the chance that you may be able to access some of the Department of Education study allowance, which I might get Elizabeth to talk about a bit later. So there is this opportunity to access that if you've got nothing and you're not qualified and you have no, you're not registered as an EALD teacher. 
Now, you might have no qualification, but you don't want to just go for the minimum. You want an extended qualification. We love people who want an extended qualification. You might be thinking, why start with just the minimum? Why not have this other qualification, this larger one, which might give you more opportunities, uh, give you more knowledge, certainly. In that case, again, if you're a qualified teacher, um, a, a qualified primary school teacher or an uh, English teacher, you've got your RPL. If you've got, if you're doing the four subjects, remember you've got the four subjects, because I want to add on to that, you would then do three more subjects and you'll end up with the graduate diploma. Now, in this case, we're giving you RPL for that practicum that you didn't need to do. So if you're doing the diploma, you'll actually end up with two subjects as RPL, which you won't have to do, two credit. Uh, you'll do six subjects overall, and you'll come out with a graduate diploma. Now, you'll notice there's electives there. Um, we would suggest classroom talk or multi-literacy is a multi-modality. Sometimes we have subjects that only uh, attached to a particular semester, but our course subjects are running all the time. We, we just keep offering them every semester. So there's a lot of flexibility if you want to do these six subjects and turn up, come up with um, an extended qualification rather than just the basic qualification. And again, if you sign up, there may be the chance that you could um, apply for this, your study allowance. If you started from the beginning, you say, I want to do the diploma. So keep in mind that it'd be six subjects, so we'll be able to calculate at the end. If you're coming in, remember, if you're not a primary school teacher and you're not a uh, secondary English teacher, you'd have to add that other subject, of course, as well. You'd be doing seven subjects. So let's imagine you already have the EALD graduate certificate qualification. You've already got the basic, but you want to upgrade because you realise that there's opportunities you'd like to take, there's opportunities to um, contribute more to your work. So you already have a qualification, you're already registered as a teacher, but you want to do a little bit more. Or register as an EALD teacher, but you want more qualification. In that case, you would come in and you would do those three subjects. Uh, you'd have the practicum as an RPL. This is if you have an EALD graduate certificate and you have done EALD pra practicum. If you don't, we'll have to talk to you about that and just find out exactly what you have. Again, some of these questions, we will have to really talk to you about um, what your actual experience is, mainly because we want to make sure that you have enough skills and expertise. We don't want you going out there not confident and not able to do the work that the department is expecting, of course. So, um, but usually if you already have done this and you have done your uh, school-based prac, you'll be getting RPL and you'll be able to come in and do, again, three subjects. And they're from that extended um, uh, suite of subjects. And if you did that, you would come out three subjects and you would have a graduate Diploma in TESOL and Applied Linguistics. If you're already a qualified, certified, registered EALD teacher, there will be some issue. You won't be able to apply for that, um, that grant. So that is a bit of a, an issue to think about, and you may want to think about that when, if you've got nothing and you're starting from scratch. But you will end up with the extended qualification. Now let's imagine that you have no qualification whatsoever, but you want to jump straight into the masters. You're feeling very confident and you really are passionate about EALD and you think, why not just go and do the whole masters? Well, we think that's a great idea. That's a great commitment. So you may, and you'll come in doing those, uh, the first suite of subjects, the second suite of subjects, so with the, uh, probably with the RPL, again, depending on your situation. And then we would add on to that the four subjects that you need to do the master of, of TESOL and applied linguistics. You'll notice most of that last part of the qualification are electives. And again, you might pick up the elective uh, that you didn't do in the, the diploma where people are doing the diploma. We have quite a number of very interesting um, uh, subjects. Uh, there's even an independent study subject, which you might like to consider where if you have a passion, you'd like to really look at that with some in, in some uh, depth. So there's a bit of flexibility and it's always looking at what's in your work. So we always uh, uh, really um, encourage you to respond to your work when you're when you're choosing that. So 
again, this is a, a great way to um, build up over time, and you don't do it all at once, of course, uh, your qualification. And if you do this, there is the chance, because you're, if you've got no qualification, you're not registered, you're starting out, if you're signing up for the whole, the whole thing, again, there is this chance to um, apply for the, the study allowance. Again, you'll have to talk to uh, the department about that, but this is where you might want to think about that to defray some of the costs. So, what if you have, I'm trying to think of everything that you might have be, what if you have the grad dip and you want to, want to do more? You want that master because, master's of, it, of TESOL. Again, you're just adding on that last part of the, um, the program and you'll have the master's. You won't be able to apply for the, the, um, the allowance because you've already, you're already registered as an EALD teacher. However, you may want to think about doing those last four subjects um, to get this coursework masters. And then of course, we'd love it if you thought about doing a research masters or doing a PhD, but that might be for another day. So these are the sorts of programs that you might be able to find you can slot yourself into. One of the questions that people will often ask is, well, how long will it take me? How long am I signing up for? And that's a very good question because you're busy um, with full-time work. I guess the question is how long can you spare? Uh, speaking from my own experience, I was a primary school teacher for my masters. I was an, a consultant and overseas doing very, uh, a lot of work, a lot of work as an advisor, very long hours when I did my PhD. So, and I also, when I was doing my upgrading for my, uh, um, my bachelor, I was working as well. So I, I fully understand that idea of trying to study and trying to teach small people in front of me. And in fact, trying to talk to government officials and people like that. So uh, we don't think, you know, we, we, we understand that people have very busy lives and there's lots of things you're trying to juggle. So I guess the question would be, how much time do you have to spare? And of course, you don't have to decide right at the beginning. You might start and then realise you need to drop back. Or you might realise it's easier and you pick up another one. I was teaching English in Japan and I, um, I found I had a lot of spare time. I picked up two subjects. It was the best thing I ever did. So again, think about what, what, what uh, your work is asking of you and, and how much time and, and mental space because, you know, you want to be able to think about these things. People are often doing one or two subjects a semester um, uh, when they're doing part-time work. And this might be a question you would like to ask our teachers at the end. Um, and because our subjects in the grad cert certificate and also some of the diploma ones are offered every semester, you won't miss out and you won't have to wait a year. Some you will, but you know, many you can just, if you didn't want to do it that semester, you can do it the next semester. So there's a lot of flexibility, we hope, in being able to pick up our subjects. So it might help you in trying to plan how much time that will take you. The other thing you might want to keep in, a few other things you might want to keep in mind is that your subjects will have a mix of students, as Keiko said, from various contexts. Now, um, this can be a, a, it's a great chance to understand the wider issues. We, we often get stuck in the classroom or our context, we get very embedded in that, and not, we, we sometimes forget things are happening outside. I think, especially if you're thinking about the community you work in and, and what might be some of the issues for the parents and the, the community that you serve through the, um, your work in the classroom. Um, another thing to keep in mind, and this is a real plus as well, is you will get the opportunity and you'll be encouraged to use your assignments to look at issues uh, from your teaching context. So it's not like you're working here and studying over here. You are in a little way, but we would hope that you are able to bring your study into your assignments because that's the most useful thing to you. I'm often saying to students, which do you think you'll be able, what, what's, the, what's the area you'll be able to use in the future? So you would really want to be deeply embedding your work in your study so that these things um, have a symmetry, I guess, and, and are immediately useful in your situation. And we do have subjects which are more specifically, particularly spe um, tailored to classroom teaching. And these are the ones that, that I've been involved in. Um, I am an old teacher from primary and secondary school. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in working with teachers to make sure that we can think about the policies, the practices, the sorts of things that really 
work in your area. And so in, from that point of view, we're, re oops, sorry. we're really trying to link closely to the department and we're talking with Elizabeth and the work that uh, some of you might know that I do with the EALD uh, seminars. Um, we're really trying to look at the, the policy and practice and how that can inform what we do. So I hope that's given you an idea of the subjects we do and what, what you can be doing uh, as part from as a teacher in terms of uh, uh, getting these extra qualifications that will help you in your work. I'm going to pass over to Keiko to do some of the nuts and bolts uh, on technical aspects of our, our courses. Thanks, Mari. And um, they're not particularly um, technical, um, but um, we believe that this um, our, our TESOL and Applied Linguistics program um, will you know, give you an advantage in your teaching career. Um, you, I think all of the people who are here today are already qualified teachers. And so by doing our course, you get an additional specialism. And whether you teach, you know, um, specifically EALD, you know, programs for EALD students, or you are, you know, continuing as a so-called mainstream um, classroom teacher, you know, you're always going to have EALD students in your class. So the knowledge that you gain from studying with us will benefit you in whatever context that you'll be teaching in. <clears throat> and you'll be working with us. Um, the teachers that you'll be working with at UTS are all experienced teachers in different areas. And You'll also be learning as much from each other as you will from us. So you'll be learning about the different contexts in which your colleagues um, come from. And you'll be, you know, we'll certainly be keen to share our different experiences of teaching, curriculum work, and research that we conduct in our <clears throat> specialist areas. And as Mari already said, our program is very flexible. Um, it's flexible in terms of entry points. And one thing that Mari didn't um, make explicit is that it's also flexible in terms of exit points. So maybe you feel at the moment, hmm, I think I'd like to jump straight into the masters. But then you find that, um, you know, your work um, becomes a little bit more intense than you imagined. Um, and you're not quite sure that you can continue at the pace that um, you started in. You might decide then to exit, you know, with a graduate diploma rather than finishing your master's in the one hit. And then when you're ready, come back and finish off the master's. Or you might be thinking at the moment, mm, I could probably only handle the grad cert. But then once you're into it, you decide, no, I can handle this and I think I'd like to keep going. Well, you can articulate easily into the grad dip or the masters. So it's flexible in terms of entry and exit. And in terms of our delivery, um, we're also very aware that, you know, you're all working. And so we have what we call asynchronous um, lectures that are uploaded online and you can access those pre-recorded lectures and also the subject readings and other materials. Basically, any time of the weekend um, day that's convenient for you. And typically, um, you will then have one and a half hour tutorials. These are real time interactive tutorials, and they tend to be in the late afternoon, early evening. So your um, I guess face-to-face -face commitment we, is, is not a lot for each subject. Um, it's 90 minutes per subject, but we do think it's really important that we do have this interactive um, tutorial um, rather than just having everything online and asynchronous because um, we certainly learn a lot about you through our interactions with you. And I know that students benefit from um, interacting not just with us, but with other students. So we are very flexible in our delivery, entry, and exit. And maybe go on to the next slide, Mari, um, unless I've forgotten something. 
and admissions requirements um, fairly straightforward. Um, you know, a bachelor's degree um, is a minimum um, admissions requirement, but all of you are qualified teachers, so I don't think I need to labor on this point and we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so application deadlines. Um, for domestic students, um, the deadline is late January 2022, but of course, you know, we want to make sure that we can secure um, a, a place for you. So the earlier that you apply, um, the better. And if you know of an international student who want to apply, um, their deadline is the 15th of January. And to apply for the course, you just apply directly to UTS um, and there's no fees attached to the application. And we'll talk a little bit more about fees in the next slide, but I should mention that for the graduate diploma and only the graduate diploma, we have a limited number of Commonwealth supported places or CSPs or what some of you may know as HEX places. Um, so, you know, if you are a domestic student, we would strongly encourage you to submit um, your full application by 9th of January um, to be considered for a Commonwealth supported place. Um, and then enroll as soon as possible after you receive an offer. So you apply, we consider your application and assuming you qualify, you will be given an offer, you accept the offer and then you can enroll. And upon enrollment, um, you can put in for your RPL, um, recognition of prior learning. So that happens once you're enrolled. Uh, time for questions now. I can see uh, Kate's put a question in the question and answer um, uh, uh, platform here. Um, if you've been teaching as an EALD teacher for three years, is it possible to get credit for that toward that practicum? Um, at the, you can, you will have the credit toward the general TESOL practicum because you're a teacher. But um, the the point of doing the prac subject is so that you can use what, when we appreciate that you've probably been doing a great job, but uh, we really want you to uh, have a practicum where you get to try out the sorts of things that we have been talking about. So, um, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, but one of the things about coming to university, of course, is we learn new stuff. So we really want people to have a chance to try out that uh, in a prac. Um, a, a prac opportunity. So it's um, it's not a very long prac. It's not like when you're a teacher's college or, you know, doing your undergraduate degree. It's not a very long prac. It's um, 15 hours. So, but we still want you, you need to have that experience. So the, and that's, a, that practicum is attached to a whole semester subject. So for example, I teach that at the moment, we have our weekly um, input and, and meetings. We have some micro teaching on a, dare I say, Saturday. We bring food, though, we bring cake. Um, and then you do your prac from that. So, um, yes, you will still be doing a prac. And that's also part of what the department has asked us to, to make sure that we include in our program too, is this um, dedicated EALD practicum um, opportunity. And Elizabeth has raised her hand. Um, teachers in that position can do the prac at their school, can't they, Mari? So they Absolutely. don't have to go to a different place. They can just do it as part of their regular job. That's right, yes. And we have quite a bit of that happening. So you're not going out to find a school. Um, you can do it within. And we just organise that so that you get some input and you get a chance to try it out. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yes, that's true. Um, are the tutorials face-to-face -face or online? Well, that's a great question at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> everything's online. Um, uh, I have a group of students who are only in China and I we do it online. Um, but a Keiko next year. <laughs> okay, um, we keep um, making plans and then plans keep changing because of, um, well, the pandemic, um, but other things as well. Um, what we are hoping um, for 2022 is that for most of the subjects, um, 
the students who can come on campus and wish to come on campus will be able to study face to face. Um, but we are aware that, you know, for a whole range of reasons, like you're stuck in China and you can't come into Australia, or, you know, you've got um, other responsibilities that make it really difficult for you to travel into campus. Um, we're hoping to make it possible for those students to, in a sense, zoom into the on-campus classroom. So we want to deliver um, the tutorials in what I guess we call hybrid mode so that we have students joining the tutorial um, online as well as on campus. Um, but it's a little bit up in the air. Um, but what we can say is that um, anyone who wants to do the course will be able to study. So you won't be excluded if you can't come onto campus. But it would be really nice if we could see students on campus. Yeah. Thanks, Keiko. And I do know that one of the things about our, our um, seminars online has been the access to people in remote or rural locations. So we are keeping that in mind. I guess it depends too. get your friends along. If we've got a large enough group, it will make a, a great case to be able to say we can serve that group of people. So can you get 30 of your friends together and try that? That would be great. And then we can definitely give you something on, online that way. Um, okay, I've got a question here about teaching, oh, nearly as long as me, um, on an old qualification. It's a degree, it's a bachelor. I'm proficient existing teacher and never had a break from teaching. You must be very tired, Melissa. So I didn't need to upgrade to the fourth year bachelor. I was wondering whether I can still apply for courses at UTS. Yeah. Yes. No you problem. Can. That should be fine, Melissa. So come along and, and join us. Um, and Emily, if we have a grad cert TESOL and approved ELD teacher with the department, can we apply for enter the grad dip? Yes. And self fund. Yes. We love people who want to pay for their courses. So yes, of course you can, we'd love to see you. And maybe you'd want to stay for the masters as well. Emily, thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I'd like to teach adults, uh, but I like the option of the school too. Do I need to choose a specific qualification that relates or does overall grad cert cover both adults and children? Okay, so, okay, I'll leave you to answer that one. Okay. <laughs> So if you are not already qualified as a teacher, um, a primary school teacher or a secondary school teacher, um, you won't be able to teach in a primary or secondary school from any of the TESOL and applied linguistics qualification alone. Um, because um, the department and I'm sure Elizabeth can elaborate on that but you know we'll want a recognized um, school teacher education qualification so the so if you've got let's say a bachelor's degree in science you're welcome to come and do the graduate certificate in TESOL and applied linguistics or the grad dip or the masters but that will not qualify you to teach EALD and literacy in schools. It will qualify you, however, to teach, um, you know, in, to, to teach English to adults or to teach um, English in a, in a, you know, foreign country um, in a um, academic English context. Sorry, that was actually Melissa, who we've just established has a degree in that for teaching. Right. So, so Melissa, you're already a teacher. Um, so you're doing this course, you'll be able to give you more options for teaching in other settings. Um, but if you want to stay in the schools, you'll have to do, you would choose that stream to do that prep. But um, as somebody who's taught overseas, they love a teacher with a qualification. So uh, you'll, probably, you'll, you'll probably give yourself a chance to do any, you know, all sorts of things. And, you know, if school teachers are really, really keen, to um, learn about, you know, the other streams, you can always, you know, pick up the adult um, literacy and numeracy or the EAP um, subject as an elective. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, there's that option if you're keen. 
And Sasha, you have a bachelor degree in education and the major in TESOL, what credit would I get? I would suggest that that might be one that you would uh, look at the subject. So this is for anybody too, if you've done some other subjects is you would look at our course subjects and, and, just, and look at the description and see if you think, well, that's just like this subject I did. So we do usually do it subject by subject and you say, well, I did that subject by doing this one over here keeping in mind that we're talking at different levels, um, undergraduate versus postgraduate. So I think it's going to be the dreaded case by case, but um, you know, that would be a way of just putting in your claim and then we would assess it and see if there's anything missing. Um, it's sometimes the thing when I'm looking at, I've been looking at students coming from other universities, for example, one in you know, our subject says literacy and numeracy and they've only done literacy. And then we have to say, well, we need you to come into the numeracy Bit as well so there's always we just want to make sure the gaps are filled we don't want you to go out with not having the, all of the information you need so case by case in that in that case Sasha um, Melissa I'd like to teach adults so do I need to pick specific stream you would choose the stream that's about teaching adults whether in Ellicos or teaching say in the uh, something like the TAFE system so yes there's two streams for that I might ask, um, Narelle, did you have anything you want to add um, in, in terms of what we've been talking about? And maybe even how you, could you maybe explain how you did the course? How did, how many subjects and how long did it take you? Well, it, it took me a couple of years. I, I um, because, you know, as we all know, it's life's busy at school, but I um, caught the bus into the um, lectures. They were two hours then. Um, I graduated in 2019, and I think it's really worthwhile to go into the to the um, lectures and tutorials because um, you know you meet lots of as Keiko said and, and you've said Mari, you do meet new people you um, from different schools, different countries. So it's 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 you know it's really quite interesting. I think that's really really adds to the to the value of your study really. Um, yeah, so it took me a couple of years, but I did it gradually. And don't forget, um, I, I didn't get the, um, the subsidy, um, apart from the Commonwealth subsidy, but I claimed on tax. So don't forget, we can claim on tax. Um, and that, that's, you know, that's reasonably substantial as well. So yes, overall, very interesting, you know, lots of great choice subject choices. It's very good. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Narelle. Um, Melissa. Okay, so I guess to clarify then, you're already, Melissa, you're already a school teacher. So you're already doing that job and you, you know, you, you have the, quali the qualifications of that. So you might want to take the stream that teaches that for teaching adults, I would imagine, depending on what you would like to do eventually, that will give you the opportunity to teach here in Australia with adults and you already are able to teach students, children. I think if you went overseas, you got that you know, want to go and teach overseas, that people would say you have adults and you have classroom teaching, you probably have your pick of jobs in that from that point of view. So if you're already quite secure in knowing that you've got the qualifications you need to stay in the department, I would suggest talking to Elizabeth for that, then you might want to branch out and take that, that adult stream. So hopefully that's helping, um, you know. Um, and Anna, where would we undertake our practicum hours? Would it possibly... Yes, so that was Elizabeth was saying you can do your prac uh, in your in the school you're in. Um, so, for example, I have a student who's already in a school. Uh, she's already a ALD teacher. She's undertaking her prac in the school. Uh, she's getting some mentoring from her uh, colleagues, the person who is her boss. Um, so she's getting some, and that means that that person's being paid to come in and watch her do some teaching. Um, doesn't have to be in the classroom all the time. So there's, you, we can work it out that you can do the work in the school. And I'm sure you would have people who would um, be, be supporting you in that role as well. So um, it's just a matter of being able to say, this is an EALD focused prac and this is how I'm doing that. Some of my students in the undergraduate program have actually done their general prac stayed on in that classroom and then said, now I'm looking at EALD. We'd like them to look at EALD all the time, but that's, that's the way they're sort of, change the focus of what they're doing. So we seem to have come to the end of the questions. Um, Elizabeth, was there anything you want to finish off with before we finish up? 
No, no, I think that's all really good. And I think the, the two things we're looking for are people who um, don't have qualifications but want to become EALD teachers in the department. And I think that we've made it really clear that you need to do a school-based EALD practicum to do that. And then, of course, trying to encourage people to strengthen and deepen their current EALD qualifications. And we've got pathways to do both of those things and it's not quite so complex as we, we thought. So thanks so much, Mari, and thanks again for the team. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, Kay, did you want to finish off? Um, well, I, I put my email in the chat. So if anyone had any questions that um, didn't get answered, or if you think of a question that you should have asked but didn't, um, please don't hesitate to just email me directly. And if I can't answer it, I'll find somebody else who can. So thank you very much um, for joining us this afternoon. And thank you, Elizabeth and Narelle. Um, it's, it's great to um, have you um, share your insights with us. And thanks, of course, Mari and Serena. We hope to see you one day with us. Yes. Apply early. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.